carbon. It can be found anywhere on Earth and makes up an important part of all living matter, such as plants, animals and humans. This is its king. As well as in living things, carbon is found in the atmosphere in the gas carbon dioxide and is dissolved in water such as oceans and rivers. It's also found in rocks, shells and in fossil fuels. All the movements between the different places where carbon is found make up the carbon cycle. Don't worry, I'll explain it to you. Let's start with the land. Plants and trees use carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through photosynthesis. They store carbon as they grow, releasing both carbon dioxide and oxygen. Animals and humans also give out carbon dioxide when they breathe. Carbon can also be released if plants are burned and when they decompose and become part of the soil. When dead plant and animal matter accumulates faster than it is decomposed, some of it can be compacted and transformed into fossil fuels such as gas, oil and coal. It took millions of years to make these fuels naturally, but we are burning them much quicker than it took for them to form. Dead plants can also float down rivers, which is one way carbon is transported from the land to the ocean. So far, carbon is present in photosynthesis, respiration, decomposition, compaction, transformation and transportation. Phew! OK, now the water cycle. Carbon moves both ways between the ocean surface and the atmosphere. Ocean plants use the dissolved carbon dioxide in the water for photosynthesis, and they store this carbon just like the land plants. Then, ocean animals eat these plants, and so the carbon gets transferred again. Ocean plants and animals release carbon dioxide back into the water through respiration. Some ocean animals use the carbon in the ocean to make their shells. When they die, their carbon-filled shells dissolve or settle on the ocean floor. When ocean plants and animals die, they decompose in the water. The decomposing plants and animals either sink and dissolve or settle on the ocean floor where they get buried in the sediment. Over a long period of time, rocks may form and wear down, which also contributes to the carbon cycle. Finally, water moving between the different layers of the ocean also carries carbon. So why is the carbon cycle relevant to humans? Well, we know that levels of carbon in the atmosphere have increased a lot in the last century. This is largely due to human activity, especially the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation. When we cut down and burn trees, they can't soak up any more carbon, and they release the carbon they've stored during their lives. And when we burn fossil fuels, more carbon is released into the atmosphere. For example, to run cars, produce electricity, manufacture goods and heat homes. There is a limit to how much oceans and land can soak up. So on the whole, carbon levels in the atmosphere are increasing. Since carbon is a major greenhouse gas, this contributes to climate change. Not just the rise in temperatures we are now seeing, but also the rise scientists predict will occur over the coming decades. We all use energy in our lives, which mostly comes from the burning of fossil fuels. By reducing our own carbon dioxide emissions, we can do our bit to help tackle climate change.